Curiosity is going through a strange period. On the one hand, we have access to unlimited information on the internet, which was unheard of even 30 years ago. However, with the sheer volume of information each one of us is consuming daily, we've become programmed to accept everything we hear and not even wonder where the information originated. But doing so impacts one of the most important habits that has propelled our society forward, and that is curiosity. Everything that I do is driven by this unsatiable desire for curiosity. And recently I came up with this thought about where this originated. There were some principles that I learned from this exercise that I wanna share with you today. Firstly, my curiosity flourished at university. I began to explore many different subjects that I otherwise wouldn't have tried and in some cases had never heard of before. After developing a habit of curiosity that started at university, I did think about what were some of the habits that I put into place in order to extend that curiosity to the point in which I'm recording this video with you now and I've read over 300 books since that point and also recorded 50 podcasts with authors. This was ultimately a more difficult question to answer because each one of us has unique experiences and we have picked up different skills over time. However, I have distilled some essential principles that I found to be useful for me. The first is always question. Always, always, always question. I know if when, like me when I was at school, my teacher would always say to me, Orn, you need to ask more questions. And I kind of wish I did, but it's one of those things where the more that you do it and the more you train yourself, the better you get at it. And for asking questions, you have to get rid of this fear of being wrong or looking stupid. Because if you look stupid and for instance, the answer seems obvious, well then at least you've reaffirmed your knowledge. And if you don't know, then you've learned something new. So it's a win-win case either way. The second principle is to read more. And if you've watched this channel before or my one minute book reviews or my podcast, you will know that I love to read. And also if you look at my bookshelf uh, and reading is a central principle in my life for answering my own curious desires. Any subject or skill that I want to learn, I automatically search for a book on that subject. And I think reading is one of those skills or pursuits that the more that you do it, the more curious you get. And I think a bibliography in a book, which is for those that don't know, a reference to the books that are referenced in the book and it's usually at the back which lists all the books and some even do it by chapter is such a great place for me as an individual because then I'm curious about the next book that I want to read based on a chapter or an idea that I saw in the book. The third and most overlooked principle that I don't think many people think about but has been central to me is to set time aside for research. We think that research is just for people who are academics or people that are studying full time. But everything that we do is research. Every book that we read, every podcast that we listen to, every video that we watch, it's all research and information that we can use to ultimately make better decisions in our lives. And I set time aside for research. I consider research to be reading, but also reviewing my notes and doing further research if there's anything that I want to know further or if there's anything that warrants further research. I think combining all these three principles, asking questions, reading more, and setting time aside for research are three great pillars to becoming more curious and developing a habit of curiosity because they all feed off one another. They all require inputs and outputs alongside one another. The inputs being reading and the outputs being asking questions and doing research. There will be times where the answer doesn't become apparent for perhaps months maybe even years, hopefully not years, but definitely months. And that's okay. What you want is to see research or the time that you spent really looking for answers as a foundation rather than an end of itself. Let me explain that. It's accumulation. It's what they call the compound effect. The more information that you consume, the better and the better understanding that you'll get and the better pattern recognition that you'll see, which will ultimately satiate your curiosity, but also you'll eventually find answers to your questions. Thank you for watching this video. If you did find this video helpful, then please do like and subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next video.
Before you go, I just want to let you know that every month I send out a monthly newsletter that includes book reviews, book recommendations, and author insights from my weekly podcasts with authors. The newsletter is totally free and the link is in the description below. It would mean the world to me if you did subscribe.